out and inflate. And guess what? We've got a tool for that. So we will uh, go in and start inflating his cheeks a bit. And um, we can just kind of eyeball and see that it spans out here. So um, we'll just keep inflating that up and try and match with the reference. Um, but again, uh, pictures are not as good as actual like life. And so, you know, I would strongly encourage you to use a mirror versus uh, these pictures, but um, you know, just for this example. And um, another thing I'm doing is you can kind of see that the nostril corner picks up towards the eyes. And um, let's see, you know, from here it's, it's very straight um, from where the nose meets the face to uh, backwards towards the nostril. But when you smile, it, uh, it picks up a little bit, almost like a sneer kind of a thing. But you can separate in, a, in, a diff, in its own blend shape, which usually I do, but um, for this example, I'm not going to. Um, so we got a little bit of that going on. Uh, I don't like the, inflate of the inflation of the cheek so far. Okay, so that's that's doing all right. It's not as exaggerated as it, as it is over here, but um, you know, still you get the basic overall concept. And um, we're actually gonna move this up a little bit to open because when you smile, you usually tend to squint your eyes a little bit. Um, but also, this is where you can create dimples, and um, he's got little dimples going on around here. So I'm gonna turn on the poly frame to get this uh, dimple exactly where I want it. And I don't know if you're using the Damien Standard brush, but it's pretty legit. Um, I mean, you can just find it online, and uh, I'm guessing Damien is the one who created it. But uh, anyway, uh, it's great for, for, for uh, wrinkles and um, creases. So uh, that's what I'm using here for his dimples. and. Um, you know, if you if you do a good base mesh, then uh, again your your mesh your wireframe will auto automatically allow for dimples and um, where wrinkles should be folding. And uh, we're going to exaggerate uh, the crease coming out here and uh, going down to the corner of the mouth. And I would exaggerate this more if his mouth was open, but this is I guess more of a grin rather than a smile. And um, so anyway, I mean, it's coming along, you know, I would be taking a lot more time with this if I were you and you were, this is for the real, the real thing. But um, again, this is just a demonstration, giving you the, uh, the main things about this. All right. So, I mean, whatever, it's not the best modeling in the world, but um, we'll go ahead and call this finished and we will export it. I usually click it over to merge. And if you want, it's just a ZBrush note. If you want your UVs to go with your OBJ that you export, you need to have texture on. Now this will give you a dumb uh, material file uh, right beside your OBJ that you export. But I mean, just delete that it, unless you want it. And um, But if you turn texture off, you won't get that texture, but you also won't get your UVs. Um, and just uh, make sure that these have numbers. Um, this has come from Maya and the origin in Maya, um, I believe. But anyway, when it says NAN, N-A-N, um, I always have problems when I import it into Maya. It doesn't. It, it says it's there, but you can't. It's not. You can't find it um, anywhere in the viewport. And uh, but anyway, yeah. Just that's a side note. So we'll export this to my desktop, and we'll call it Grin. Okay. So now we're ready to go back over to Maya. And from here, we'll import what we just exported from ZBrush, the grin. Okay, now here's where it gets important um, for your blend shapes to work properly. Now this is going to be my um, polysurface one. We'll rename it base mesh so we know what's going on. And this is what's going to be have the blend shapes applied to it. Um, this is what's going to actually be deforming. And so it's very important that uh, the meshes you import from ZBrush are right directly on top of it um, because all blend shape is is taking the vertex information and uh, morphing it into that new shape and so 
for example, it, this is my shape that I want it to be. Um, you know, if I froze the transforms right here, then this blend shape on the left will will move all the way over to this position um, because it's taken every vert and moving it to the new vert. Whereas if this is right on top of it, then all the other verts um, stay where they are, except for the ones that change, which is what you want. And um, so with that in mind, also, um, you can move this wherever you want, just as long as the origin, uh, when everything's zeroed out, is still directly over top. So, you know, just move it out to the side. Usually my, uh, my blend shape scenes, there's, you know, the one guy in the middle and then, you know, 40 other shapes all around him. But it's, I always keep it in the middle so I know which one is uh, the one, the, the main mesh. And so here's how you just simple um, assigning a blend shape. You select the shape you, you want it to change into, then select your main mesh. Go to on your animate menu, create deformers, blend shape. We'll open the option box so we can look in here. Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the local and world uh, the difference is. I mean, I know what local and world you know transformations are, but I just leave it as a default on local. Also, in the advanced, leave it on default. There are several options in here, but um, I mean, just mess around with that as much as you want. And so we'll create the blend shape, and looks like nothing happens, but that's just because we need the blend shape window open so we can start morphing this. And uh, go to Window, Animation Editors, and Blend Shape. And uh, so from here, we can we can see our grin popping up. And uh, um, you know, it's, it's pretty standard, but with good modeling, um, you know, starting out with a big brush so you affect a larger area and then moving to the smaller brushes, you can see we affect a large area of the face, therefore it gives it a very organic feel. And it almost, um, I've, had, I've had a lot of riggers come up to me and ask how, the, how, I, how I do this. I thought it was pretty straightforward, but it looks like there's more than one shape working together, but it's just the one shape. Um, and uh, now you can't get too broad you know I, I don't want you know if I split this in half I don't want this corner of the mouth affecting you know this eyelid corner you know but um, you do want it to look organic and like it's sliding across a skull because that's what it should be doing um, but uh, you know I'm pretty happy with that I guess it, it looks like a grin um, Okay, so I know I said that I would show you how to split the blend shapes in half so you'd have control over each half of the face. Um, but it's getting kind of long, and uh, I know I personally hate long tutorials. So I'm going to cut it short, and um, I guess if you guys, you know, if I get a good response to this tutorial, maybe I'll, um, you know, make another one that goes a little, little further. Um, but uh, this is, again, the, the base technique that I use to create my blend shape driven facial rigs. Um, so if you isolate areas of your mesh, like your mouth, your cheeks, um, your eyes, uh, and, and create uh, shapes for each of these areas, then uh, eventually you'll have a fully expressive face and you can make it as controllable as you want, um, depending on how many shapes you're willing to sculpt and how it fits your project. Uh, but that's all. Thanks for watching, um, and I'd like to close in the manner of Sir Bob Ross. Happy modeling, and God bless, my friend.